Greetings, my name is Joe Bustios. I am the course director for EDM 613 Media Asset Creation. And this is a little course intro video. First off, we need to make sure we establish our contact information. There's how you can refer to me. And then my email addresses, uh, edm613 at me.com and mac at fullsale.com. Um, here is my instant message uh, chat handle, edm613 at me.com. Um, and then the voice, uh, or, uh, voice or Skype um, would be JB Bustios. And then uh, my online hours are variable, so you need to kind of check in on the, the calendar that's posted in FSO. A little bit of a hierarchy as far as uh, trying to contact me, obviously, if uh, you have a message that you need to uh, send to me, uh, but it can, you know, have a little bit of a delay, then the email is probably your best bet. Also, I tend to have a, a bit of a policy that if uh, you have a question to the point where you're sending me an email, then there's probably several others in the class that has the same question. And so I do have a tendency when you guys send an email to me that when I answer out the question in email, then I will um, send the email to everybody. I'll CC everybody with that. And then obviously the instant message is a, a, a quicker mode of communication. Um, and if you do uh, feel like uh, your question or concern requires voice, then your best bet is to use Skype. If you don't see me um, online, then there's a pretty good chance that I'm not in the office. And so if you call and you don't see me online, um, then you're probably going to go right to voicemail, which may be your choice. Um, and so that's how we do the communication thing. So what is media asset creation? Essentially, it's evolved a little bit over the last uh, couple of years that uh, the course has been uh, been taught uh, what it's evolved to uh, in its current um, incarnation is uh, we basically send, spend um, a lot of our energy in our 30 days together getting all the pieces together getting your assets together uh, that you need to have together before you can get into month 12. Um, always beginning always uh, kind of with a realization that uh, part of our focus is on the usage of our media and that we want to make media an ally in whatever we do, whether it's this program or our teaching or our profession. And we have uh, several milestones in month 11, and this is for our action research students. Uh, week one, we got a lit review. Week two, we have the actual AR website. Week three, we have the abstract is due. Week four, we have a publishing leadership project and a Wimba sharing that we'll be doing during that week. And then also for our thesis students, week one will be your a content proposal. Week two, actually there's nothing week two. Week three, you have your thesis final draft. And week four, you have your media sharing, a media project that you'll share during a particular um, slot at that time also. So what does our class look like over the course of the weeks? Basically, uh, we're going to turn in everything. We're going to kind of interact with with each other uh, based on a blog that you are putting together as part of your week one comms and links uh, project. And it may be a blog that you have previously used in a previous class. You can repurpose that particular blog or maybe something you create um, on your own. It can be Word, uh, WordPress. It can be iWeb. It can be Blogger. Um, and what's most important, obviously, is that it's something that you're comfortable with. And then also, um, our blogs are not limited to just writing. You may want to do a little bit of multimedia. So uh, we do want to definitely encourage that. And so that's something you will do right away at the very beginning of the course is to create your blog and then post your blog so that others can interact with you. So in a blog, we're going to have um, several do um, during the week. The, uh, we'll have at least one blog post that's related to the reading. And the, the blog post should reflect your interaction with the reading um, assignment for the week. Generally, with our book, we have three um, chapters due each week that you need to read. And I don't really need for you to do a recitation of what took place in the three chapters because I know what happens in those chapters. But what I'm really looking for is your interaction with it. What things stuck out to you? What things do you agree with that you or you don't agree with? Um, looking for some level of interaction, something much more than it was a really cool chapter and then you move on. So that's kind of what we're looking for in your blog post. And then you'll do two additional blog posts where you will actually visit someone else's um, blog and read their post. And then um, you will comment on their blog because they should have their comments turned on. And then you will copy the original blog post plus your comment back to your blog. I should, oh, I should be able to go to your blog. And you'll, of course, do this with 
two classmates, and I should be able to go to your blog and see the original plus your comment right there on your blog post without having to go anyplace else. And then a fourth blog post will be due um, each week, and this can be um, if we have a project that particular week um, that you may want to do the blog post on, that's perfectly okay. Um, or it's or it's a free choice, so it can be an additional reading post, an additional comment post. Uh, it could be about uh, what's going on at work. It could be something in relation to media. It could be something in relation to your progress or questions or concerns that you have with the program. Um, only requirement, obviously, is that you that it's your work and that um, it's something that's uh, appropriate for sharing with um, your classmates uh, in our program. And then we also have our Wimbas. There is one for week one, week two, on Tuesday or the archive. There isn't one in week three. And then in week four, we kind of have a special uh, Wimba that you will sign up for. We have a couple uh, evenings that we will set up for our Wimba session. You're only required to, to go to one. But whereas uh, the one, the week one, week two are more or less kind of informational, and then we do want to Q and A if uh, you know kind of support each other. Week four really is is uh, set about where you are going to share um, something in relation to the publishing and leadership project that I mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, those of you in the thesis, you'll be sharing on your media project. So, unlike the first two Wimbas, the fourth Wimba or the Wimba for week four will be um, where you are basically doing the sharing as a as um, individuals, and you'll sign up for that, and we'll have more for, information about that later. And we have our discussion boards. Uh, week one and week four, we have two. Uh, what I call quickies and basically I pose a question and then you will post your answer and I'm not looking for long discourses what I'm basic but I am looking for you know well thought out very brief uh, comments in relation to the topics that I present and then that gives your classmates an opportunity to interact with those questions so we'll do that twice in week one and four and then in week two and three in addition to the two quickies we have one deeper where I'm going to ask you to list um, some information in relation to the questions posed for those two weeks. So that's basically the week activities and what it looks like kind of as a, a, a large overview is this particular chart here. We've got the, the blog posts, you have the Wimba, the Wimba sessions, obviously no Wimba in week three, discussion boards, uh, the reading, there's uh, three chapters due for each week and then in the final column we do have the, um, the projects that are due for that particular week. Then we have to talk a little bit about due dates, and uh, you'll you'll notice that everything's pretty much due on the Sunday of that particular week, and that the due dates are listed in the title of the activity, and then also if you open the activity, uh, you should see in the deliverable section a listing of the um, due date. Uh, so don't get confused if you see other dates. Um, I'm using a blogging I'm using blogging software to host the information, so. You, if you see a specific date, that usually uh, has to do with when that blog was created and not in the actual due date. So you'll have to kind of be paying attention to that sort of stuff. And then uh, the, us being in month 11, uh, we're kind of limited in terms of being able to grant extensions because everything that we do really has to get done within the 30 days that we have for our month. And so we can't extend beyond that because then that goes into month 12 and that creates all sorts of other problems because everything that's assigned for this particular class in this particular month has to be done before you can move on to month 12 because there just is no room for that uh, extension. So we do a little bit of, uh, you know, we will negotiate and work within the month, um, but we can't go beyond the month. And so this kind of leads to my thoughts about uh, why we do have due dates. Uh, human nature being the way it is, if we didn't have due dates uh, spread out throughout the month, then uh, most of us, myself included, would probably wait until that fourth Sunday to get it done. And so, uh, consequently, we've set these things up as markers of, you know, our progress and kind of encourage us to, to get this stuff done. The, um, but the actual focus of what we're doing needs to be on what we're getting from the experience and not just that we're getting the, getting the work done. We don't want getting the work done to uh, preempt all the benefits of the, the reading that we're doing, the writing we're doing, the interaction that we have. Um, but if we don't have the due dates, then I know, having been doing this for a while, 
but that it just won't get done. You know, there are things that I would like to accomplish in my life that there that are do not do not have hard and fast uh, due dates, and consequently they seem to shift from year to year. So we don't have that luxury in a thirty day class, and so we kind of have to pay attention to it. But it really comes down to, you know, we the due dates are meant to serve us, and so uh, when it comes to the larger projects. Uh, and you turn stuff in, then very much uh, the the lit review or the thesis final draft for the, you guys that are thesis people, and the um, the um, action research website, you will turn them in, and then we will enter. You know, we'll look at them, and then if they need uh, some corrections, then we will send them back to you, and then you will do them, and then turn them back into us, and this will go back and forth until they're done, because the objective is to get it done by the end of the month. Uh, there will be no penalties for these sorts of corrections. And the more you work with us, and you know, the better these sorts of things uh, tend to work out. But it is one of these sorts of things where we do need to get things done in a timely manner, primarily because of the load that we're under, and because we're sitting at the very end of the program, we don't have any time to kind of let things slip. Now, when it comes to the actual stuff that we do in the class, as far as the blogs and the discussion boards, particularly the discussion boards, if you don't do week one discussion board until week four, well, nobody, it's kind of like the party has left that room. So if you, you know, you make a comment, you know, an hour after someone else made the initial comment, it just, it loses its context and it, it becomes meaningless. And so the discussion boards needs to get done within that particular week. A day or two can slip, but um, not much more than that. So, and then of course, it's basically up to me whether or not I accept late work. Um I will work with you because my my intention is for you to um, accomplish all the things that we need to get done. Um, but if somebody uh, tells me that they were late in week one, but didn't tell me until week four, then that's some, that's not really anything we can do anything about. Uh, we just need to get the work done. And so the purpose of the due dates is to give us markers so that we can successfully get through all the tasks. And so here is a look at the calendar. I usually list, now obviously this is a screenshot from a previous class during uh, the summer, but uh, you'll see I will list out when week one, two, three, and four activities are due. The next uh, little chart there is kind of a, a heads up as to when the uh, items are due, kind of in a more of a chart form. And then the final part down there, the online, Wimba, online and Wimba hours, is the variable, variable part where you can kind of track when, you know, where's Waldo or where's Joe. And uh, so you can kind of anticipate when I will be in the office and those sorts of things. So that's what the purpose of that particular item is. And uh, in a separate video, I will step you through step by step how we interact with our materials in the course to kind of get you up to speed um, and make sure that we're all on the same page with this stuff. So I'm really hoping uh, and looking forward to interacting with you and all the great stuff that we're going to accomplish this month. Again, if you have any questions, uh, please make sure that you go ahead and ask me uh, right away. And then, of course, we can all benefit. Uh, if you've got a question, you email me, then uh, I will spread it around. Uh, instant message and Skype is a lot more direct, a lot quicker. But again, it's one of these sorts of things that I'm um, very interested in uh, your interaction with the materials and so communication is uh, very very important and it is in fact the first thing that you need to accomplish in this course is the comms and links project so uh, I look forward to it and I hope that we have a great month together and I'll talk to you later bye bye